Okay, what's your name and where are you from? My name is Dr. Terry Bennett. I'm from Rochester, New Hampshire. Okay, and what did you think of the event? I thought it was an interesting event. I hope yep. Mr. Edwards gets uh, elected and I hope he exercises what he says he's going to exercise. And I talked to you before um, the, the event while, while you were in line. You gave me a handout with some very interesting information on about universal health care. And would you like to um, would you like to tell uh, the blog viewers or readers um, what that was about? Sure. I'm the last solo general practitioner in all of Stratford County. That means okay. I'm the last private non-employee physician in all of a county in New Hampshire, and now, I'm 68 years old. Okay. Now, how many people in the county? There's probably 200,000. Uh, in okay. County. All right. I have about 10,000 patients in my practice. I'm 68. There is no young doctor that wants to be me, thus I cannot recruit a new doctor. Okay. I am driven crazy by HMOs. Yeah. I'm running all the time trying to get free medicines for my patients that don't have health insurance. Yeah. I have six women processing paper for me now where I began my practice 20-something years ago in New Hampshire with one secretary. Now and it requires was, six to and, do the work. And that secretary also handled your appointments. And, and everything. And there was sufficient amount for one exactly. person. Now it takes six women running as fast as they can go to do HMO work and other insurance company work and try to keep me so that I, what I'm doing is just taking care of patients, not processing papers. Okay. So we need to change all that. There are no new doctors coming out of school. We don't produce enough doctors in America. Okay. In the first place, we're importing doctors because we don't produce enough. We indebt the ones we do produce. The average medical school debt's now three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, no altruists left in that bunch. Yeah. My um. There's a lot of doctors in my family, and um, my brother-in-law, when he got out of, he went through um, Tufts, and then he went to Jefferson, and when he got out of school, he owed almost one hundred and seventy-five. $5,000. It's 300 grand now. Yeah. They become an employee. Yeah. And you've lost any access to such physicians. They won't take care of the poor because they can't. They can't. <laughs> they can't afford it. I don't think that people understand doctors cannot afford to do so many things. So you have to ask your brother, would he tell his kid to become a doctor? And I think you'll be surprised at the answer because the answer is no. Well, the, the answer is yes because he's going to be able to pay for it. <laughs> Well, he's going to be able to pay for this. He's in a better capacity than I am because I'm not making a living. But he, but he said that um, he would never do it again. Yeah. He wouldn't be able to do it See, again. My dad was a GP. I've got two sons and a daughter. None of them would be a doctor, and they're all much smarter than I am. <laughs> I mean, I'm running as an old man because I don't dare close because there's nobody that will take over my practice and do what I do. Yeah. The poor people that I take care of will be basically off the radar screen the minute I close. And, you know, even, I mean, is there like kind of a charity or a mercy hospital around here? There is our hospital, and they do, in fact, run what they call a free clinic. You know, if you do qualify, you have to bring in your tax return and prove that you're poor. And then it takes several months to get seen. Uh. And you get sicker and sicker and sicker in, yes. the, in the interim. Prevention doesn't happen at all in an environment like that. Yeah, it's terrible. No dental care for kids. They grow up with heart disease. That costs us a bundle, but we don't pay for their dental care. Yeah. I, I, I read recently that um, dental disease is one of the main causes of inflammation, which is a precursor to heart disease. Exactly. It's highly connected. So, so if just you don't having... take care of kids' teeth, you end up with adults with heart disease. That's a big savings. And so... So yeah, we need to do something that um, that has a, a long ball view of it, not an next quarter corporate view, but a long ball, what are we going to do for society view. Yeah. And that's what I'd like both John Edwards and all these candidates to address. They all talk about universal health care, but unless they get rid of HMOs, unless they fix drug prices so that we're equal to everybody else in the world, instead of five to 50 times more expensive. Yeah. Unless they fix it so that doctors graduate debt-free and can be what kind of doctor they want them to be. Some will be dermatologists, but some should be family doctors. No family doctors under these circumstances. Because they can't afford it. No, it doesn't make any logical sense to borrow the money to get through school. Then you can't borrow money to set up your practice, so you have to go to work for somebody that you despise, but that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do as a person, because I mean, if you default on your loans, yeah. what are you going to do? Yeah. You ruin your financial future. Exactly. Thank you very much for you're speaking welcome. to me, Dr. Barnett. And thank you very much for the work that you're doing. Thank you. It's very important. Well, thank you. I like to think it is. That's why I'm still doing it. Thank you. Thank you.